So welcome back to Worth the Effort Woodworking. Today I want to do a little personal project. Just something super easy. I really want to add some shelving into this backyard garden so that I can continue to create layers in this area. My problem is, like a lot of people, the spacing between my fence posts is, is 8 feet. So spanning across a bunch of them poses some challenges that we're going to simply solve today. This is something that you can use on pretty much any wooden fence you, you see out there. So if you're wanting to add shelves in your backyard for anything from potted plants to just tool storage or something like that, this might be an option for you. Now in my example, I'm going to do two shelves. One, you know, about halfway between the beds and that rail right there, and then another towards the top. Uh, this will allow me to do uh, garden stuff on the bottom shelf. And up top, I'm going to do a bunch of tree starts so that maybe in a couple years I can replant a hundred or so of the trees that I've used in all my woodworking. Again, the problem is the eight foot span, because if you buy eight foot boards, there's not going to be that much left to rest them on. If you buy 10 foot boards or 12 or 16 or something like that, well then you're partially spanning sections. So how do you join the boards together? Those are the problems we're gonna be solving. So the supplies from my particular project, uh, well, I got four uh, two by eights, two two by fours and one two by six plus a box of screws and i just got back from the store and those cost me 70 bucks previously i bought uh these little caps some uh, iron bar for the plumbing department some little clamps some washers and at home uh, at tractor supply i bought some nuts from their materials and you buy these by the pound uh, i want to say i spent two bucks for those and i forgot how much but I would guess me I probably have 50 bucks right here so for my project I'm probably looking at 120 130 bucks I am going to be doing some metal working but if you don't want to do metal working or you don't want to spend this much money I would just get uh, wooden dowels and call that done and wooden dowels for this project will probably run you five ten bucks so you could do this entire project my example for less than a hundred bucks now because I am doing some metal work and I'm going to be pinning that metal to match the rest of the uh, backyard setup, which, you know, that's kind of a welding experiment, a learning exercise for me. Everything with zinc on it, I'm, based, I'm going to be stripping the zinc off by just letting it soak in vinegar. The acid will take that zinc off. and That will not only allow me to weld on it safely, but it'll also um, paint better. So in a few hours, we'll, we'll be down to bare metal. Now I'm gonna start with the metal work for the simple reason the paint on it can be drying while I'm doing the woodworking and this could be a one day project. Uh, what I need to do is basically scour off all the black and schmutz and whatever oils on anything I'm going to be welding or painting, which means pretty much all the bars and just the faces of uh, these little end caps and the faces of the nuts. Next, I'm gonna attach one of these end caps onto it. And basically, in the end, I'm gonna have an end cap on both sides. One of them will be not be welded, so I can tighten on it, and that's gonna squeeze this onto the fence post. But once again, if you are not going to be investing in the metalworking, don't worry about this. I'm doing, I'm attaching these as tight as I can finger-wise now because I'm gonna go measure them on the post. That way I get the exact measurement of where to weld on the nut. And just like that, bump it up there. I can now just take a d measurement directly off of the piece and I never really had to worry about pulling out a tape measure. Now, just FYI, what I'm kind of trying to experiment with is welding different thickness of metal together. This is a lot thicker than this iron pipe. So supposedly you have to put more heat into the thicker part and then just kind of edge it over with the really high settings. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to weld this bolt right on that line that I have. And that way I can tighten this down with a washer on it and I'll squeeze on the, on the post right here. Just gotta weld that up. And I will say this, I probably should have taken a grinder to these, not just that wire wheel, but 
It's just for, out for outdoor stuff and I'm just playing. Now, figuring out where to put your shelves is entirely up to you. Me, personally, I'm coming down from the top, so at least I know that they will be parallel with the top, so it will look right, even if it isn't right. But the key thing is how to get them level spanning multiple bars. Well, a string across two nails on the two farthest corners tighten it up and that would tell you where at least to drill the holes for the holes you're going to be using and there'll be a straight line all the way down you just got to make sure you get a good amount of tension on that string okay y'all i'm having to come back and refilm this portion i don't know what happened but when i was editing i noticed that it was missing i know i filmed it just hit hit the wrong button i guess but drilling the holes it's incredibly important that we get them all in plane all horizontal so everything sits right now normally if you had fresh set up all these would be plumb and stuff like that and you could just very basically take a square put it up next to it and then when you drill just kind of eyeball it straight this way and that way and it will all work out the problem is if you notice a lot of old fences or even this one right here that middle section right there well it starts to kink right where that is and it comes out a little bit so they aren't in line so they aren't plumb so if i were to make them all perpendicular to those that particular one wouldn't be in line so a better solution if you're using old fencing is to figure out the exact point where you want to put it put your drill in line and then use a level get the bubble just right and then you can line up your chisel or your drill bit with the level to make it plumb and at least all of them will be based upon being plumb to the earth not necessarily perpendicular to the fence Grab a couple big wrenches and these things will be done. One for the big nut and one for these. So with all that work on alignment, how do you think we did? Uh oh, oh no, I'd say Close enough for a side garden. Back to woodworking. So next we take this two by six. I'm gonna cut it up into six pieces to go on those individual pipes. And boom, like that. I've got six and because I'm a stupid woodworker, I put bevels on them because of stupid reasons. 
Next, I'm turning all of these into seesaws by first marking out the midpoint. These are 14 and a half inches in my example, so seven and a quarter. And then installing two of these little clamps. But I'm only going to be screwing one side on at this time. I can then come over, put them around the pole, and screw the other side down. It doesn't really matter that they spin. As I said, it's a seesaw. Now here's the advantage to that teeter-totter system. I can just go set these on there. Now the first one, it's gonna make it all level and stuff like that. And I'm just gonna push it over so a little bit of it is hanging off. Then I'll go lay up the second one. Now that you've got the weight of both of them on here, I can just kind of center it. But I'm, I think I'm going to put them about this far away from the post just to create a little drainage area. And now all I gotta do is screw them down. And I really do think one or two screws in each board is all you're gonna need. And with that, there is absolutely no reason why you couldn't say this project is now done. They will support weight. They'll last years when they, they rot. All you have to do is replace those boards. You can put wider ones or shorter ones. You can do whatever you want with them. But I want to make them a little bit better. You'll notice that, you know, that board down there, it's a little warped. They're in line and stuff like that. And because they are 2 by material, even though they're 2 by 8 now there's going to be some flex as you put weight on them. So that's why I bought those extra two by fours. Let's turn these into some I-beams. So what I've done is I've cut those two by fours in half. And of course I put a little bevel on them. And we're actually going to glue and screw them up underneath these right in the center. That'll give it a lot of strength. Let me show you. So my first step was to mark center of the space between the post, and then I mark center of each one of those boards. Next, I want to create a line for all my screw holes to be in, so I'm just going to lay this down. This will tell me how where, where the screw holes is, and it's just the width of the 2x4, and I can just run a line right down the board. Now it's a matter of running some screws right down that line. Then I'm going to run a bead of waterproof outdoor glue right down the middle. This is what's going to give it the strength. The screws are just going to be the clamps that hold it down while the glue dries. Now I'm going to drive the center screw down until I see it coming through. Place that right in the, on the line for the center piece and screw it in. And then I can just come to the other two screws. And even before the glue has a chance to set, you can see how much stronger this is. It's also a lot straighter. And with those I-beams now adding a very good amount of structure, plus the fact that they straighten the boards out quite a bit, granted those two boards on the end, they got a kind of a, a they cup a little bit at the end, that's why I put them down there. But that right there works out pretty well. And if you want to, you could drill holes in that to hang stuff. So I guess all that's left is to put everything up.
and that's that. I was able to get all the herbs off the ground where they weren't getting much sunlight underneath these barrels up. So hopefully it'll get a little bit more sunlight. And it offered a little bit of shade for my garden because it was just baking in this Texas sun. But it'll still get full sunlight, at least six hours. So I think it'll all work out. Again, this is a really simple project. Getting pegs into the fence post and then using a seesaw to balance it out. So now you can just buy two by eight or whatever will fit in between the posts and set them on the seesaw and go from there. And it will still be a consistent line all the way across because it's anchored to those seesaws. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Again, it was just a little personal project. Something for me to have fun with. <laughs> As always, remember, it's worth the effort to learn stuff, create, and share with others. Y'all be safe and have fun.